Bear Talk is produced by the Golden Bear Gazette, Mount Juliet High School student newspaper. Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear Talk. I'm your host, Z. And I'm your host, Jackson. And I'm Everett. In today's episode, we will be discussing what we did over fall break and looking forward to Halloween. We're back from fall break with our Halloween episode. How was everyone's fall break? I worked the whole time. How did you? Um, I, mine was great. I surfed and then accidentally went to a nude beach. So what? Was great. Yeah. Did you call me a cog? Yeah. What even is? I oh, never mind. I don't want to know. What did you do? Uh, I, I went to Maine to visit family. Boring. Okay. It was, it was quite My mom quite went nice. to Maine. It was quite nice. Wow. I'm I'm very happy for you. All right. Anyways, so what are you? What do y'all have any Halloween plans? And like, what's your costume gonna be? Everett, what are you? What are you dressing up as for Halloween? I, I'm not quite sure yet. I like to leave it as like a last minute thing. Really helps with my creativity. <laughs> All right. Helps with your creativity. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going as Spider Man. Oh. I'm sure everyone listening to this who knows me was very surprised by that. Because mm. apparently that's my only personality trait. Hey. <laughs> uh, hey. Marzella, what are you going as? Um, all my friends and I are going as the Winx Fairies. Nice. Yes. What is that? What is the, that? The Winx Fairies? What's that? I don't know, man. They're just fairies. But there's like six of them and there's what? six of our friends. What's so it from? Probably. The Winx Fairies. Like, what? It's called The Winx Fairies. Like, it's just a cartoon. A, I've oh, never heard Well, of and that. there's a Winx Saga on Netflix. It's also very slay. All right. <laughs> Okay, so we want to see what your guys' costumes are going to be. So just take a picture of you in your Halloween costume and tag us, and we will feature it on our Instagram story. If you haven't gotten a yearbook yet, you're going to want one. There are many things that you will remember about this year, and there are many things that make this year memorable. As you make memories this year and overcome challenges, we encourage you to always remember by purchasing a 2023 yearbook. Current prices are $85 plus tax. Please visit room B118 to get yours today. Buy your book. Make the most of it. Remember all of it. The Golden Leaf. Welcome, Welcome back, back to Can You Dig, Dig it. it. I'm Jordan. And I'm Ren. Unfortunately, no Molly this week because she couldn't think of a single Halloween movie that she likes enough to talk about. I don't understand how anyone can like Halloween movies. I don't like Halloween movies. You guys are you guys are just weird. Well, Ren, we all know how much you love Halloween, so what is what are your plans this year? Um, that's a great question. That is a great question. Mm. Um, I don't really know. We, me and my friend who I'm doing it with, we are still planning what we're, what we're. Well, what are you going to be? <laughs> Another great question. I thought Halloween was your favorite holiday. I, well, I was going to be Daphne from Scooby-Doo, but yeah. then that changed and I might be a fairy now. Oh, you could be like Winx, like Marzella? No, just a fairy. Oh. What are, you, what are your plans? Um, me and Kate are going to be um, Scott Pilgrim and Ramona Flowers from Scott Pilgrim vs. the fun. World. That's fun. Nobody understands. Like, I, 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 I tell people all the time, and they just don't know. I get they it. They literally okay. don't know. But are you gonna are you gonna rewatch Scream? Of course, like I've every I, year. Um, yeah, only only some of them because I don't like them all. But well, I'll, that's, I'll, a, I that's a great segue into our favorite Halloween movies. Yeah, so Scream is my like favorite movie ever, and it always puts me in like a, a good mood, even though strange. It's, it's it's a scary movie about murdering, but mm-hmm. whatever. My mom was the one who convinced me to watch it like years ago and I do this thing with my mom she'll tell me to watch something and then I won't until I finally do and then I end up loving it right I mean that's how it always works yeah but Scream is such a good movie the first one um was in 1996 starring Nave Campbell Courtney Cox David Arquette and Skeet Ulrich and I think the reason I like it so much is because it has a fear factor to it but it's also really funny and out of the five Scream movies the first one is obviously my favorite. The second one is also really good, but I'm not as big of a fan as the others. Last year, a fifth one came out, and I thought it'd be terrible. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it greatly surprised me, and they're currently making a new one, I believe, but it might be coming a bit too much at this point because there's a point no no right like yeah, there's a point uh, like they can only it, it, they can only have the same plot line so many times ex- yeah exactly but the movie is about 
it revolves kind of around murders that take place in Woodsboro, California, and the killer's name is Ghostface because he wears a mask. Mm-hmm. That's a ghost's face. Oh, funny. So I know. Funny. And so original. Yeah. <laughs> and the main it girl in it is Sydney, and she's so cool. And all horror movies have like a final girl, and she's my maybe favorite. you should be her. Maybe. That's a good idea. Next year. I, I know. I'm so good. I'm Next so year, good. Next year, you're so good. You're so good. Um, but yeah, t- tell me about your favorite movie. Um, my favorite movie is Monster House. I'm actually really, really scared of Halloween movies. Aww. Like, I don't watch scary movies at all. Um, it's just not my thing. But I think that Monster House, like, Monster House is a PG movie. It's a kid's movie, right? But yeah. it is, like, horrifying. Yeah. Um, it was made in 2006, and it's about these three children who notice the house across the street. With, the house across the street from them is like actually alive and eats children what? when it comes onto its property. <laughs> and there's this old man that lives there who like doesn't want them to come inside the house or be near the house, probably because it eats children. But he's like really yeah. mean and aggressive. Um, but the this is the, this is the scary part, scariest part, and this is not a spoiler because it's at the very beginning of the movie. Uh-huh, but, I see, I see. Um, he comes like at the very beginning. He comes out of the house because one of the children is on his property and like starts like shaking him in the air and like screaming at oh. him, and then he has a heart attack and dies on top of him. <laughs> like like you watch him die like on top of the child, and it is horrifying. That, that like, sounds it's, horrifying. It's, it's and it's PG. Are you okay? It's Are you PG. Okay? No, I'm not. <laughs> But what, like, adds to it being so scary is it was filmed um, in, like, the computer animation style of the Polar Express. That is scary. Which is where actors were filmed while wearing motion centers, creating moving skeletons to animate with computers. So it's, like, it's, like, creepy. And then when you see, like, side-by-side clips of, like, all the the people wearing, like, the motion sensors all over their face, it's actually horrifying. But I I won't spoil anything, but it has, like, one of the best backstories I've ever seen in children's movie. Mm-hmm. So definitely go watch it this Halloween. I love Monster House. I probably won't watch it this year because I don't like going to sleep late and I'm already trick-or-treating. It's- My neighborhood does this cute little thing where we have, like, a bonfire and we have, like, a, a, a costume contest. And I don't think I'll win because I'm 16 years old and <laughs> nobody knows my costume. Are you going to be in a contest with a bunch of, like, seven-year-olds? Yes. Like, I'm like, there's like two other people who are who go to high school in my neighborhood, and they haven't trick or treated in like years. Aww. So I'm like the only one left. That's cute. I, it's kind of sad. I hope you. I hope you'll win. I hope I'll win too. I know that my costume is gonna slay. I think it will. Remember that one time that you made me watch Scream, <laughs> and I, I fell asleep. Yeah, I did. That was kind of sad. That made me sad. But it's. I, I have no hard feelings. It's I okay. don't remember any of it. It's okay. I remember that one girl. Yeah. And her running in the kitchen. Yeah, that was at the the very beginning, but okay. Well, (laughs) I hope that you have the most fun watching Scream this Halloween and doing your things, whatever you want to be. Yeah. Um, Thank you for watching Can You Dig It? Or listening. listening. Thank you for listening to Can You Dig It? Yes. Hello and welcome to our special segment. Today's segment is going to be filled with myths and monsters. Our special guest this week is Mr. Lawrence, our mythology teacher. How are you today, Mr. Lawrence? I'm delightful, Paige. How are you? I'm doing as good as I can be. Mythology is a very fascinating subject. What does mythology mean to you, Mr. Lawrence? I love mythology. I think mythology represents a continuation of culture and history through time. Um, I think it represents our love of storytelling as... A species, I think it represents kind of the heart of humanity as a whole. I think it's super important. I think it's a really neat subject to study. I do too. I think it's so fascinating and especially like the variety and how like we like connect and how you can look at different cultures and how they intertwine with each other. So following up with that question, where can we find the earliest records of mythology? So, as far as I'm aware, the earliest records of mythology we can find would be in the Fertile Crescent, kind of the Mesopotamia area. I think the Sumerians were first. I might be wrong about that, but that's kind of our first culture we talk about in my class. Uh, So, we talk about the Sumerians and kind of what they were like, how they lived, what their gods were, what they believed. And then we talk about the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is actually the oldest epic we have. Mm -hmm. 
also known as like the dream tablet and I think we started with that was how our basis of dreams kind of started yeah okay so now on to our spooky myths for Halloween Ooh. so I think we're gonna start with um, one of the classics of Bloody Mary Ooh, okay so from English folklore Bloody Mary was likely inspired by our real-life Queen Mary the first of England who was nicknamed Bloody Mary due to the hundred of people she burned at uh, the stake during her rule so the ghost of Bloody Mary was likely an happy woman who committed suicide due to the fact of having her child stolen, her being accused of murdering her children. This turned her spirit mad with grief, and she haunted the world. She haunts the world via like mirrors, and she will appear to someone who like calls her name three times, which most people know by fact, and some people tend to try it. Um, but if you do provoke her, most people say she will kill her victims via disfigurement decapitation her by scratching their eyes out. Or she will take you to the other side of the mirror, or known as the other world. Dang. <laughs> you know, I remembered hearing about this when I was in elementary school, and you know, all the kids would be on the playground like, oh, did you do Bloody Mary last night? And like, there was a specific time you were supposed to do it. And of course, I was never brave enough to actually give it a shot, but yeah, yeah this is definitely familiar territory for me. I've, I don't know, maybe I should go home and try it tonight, see if I can get Bloody Mary coming into my mirror. Yeah, I think it's like midnight. You're supposed to do it at like the middle of the night at midnight, and like I know everyone, especially when I was young, like in elementary school, everyone would be like, on Halloween, they'd go into their bathrooms at like midnight and like lock the door, and they'd like, and then Halloween morning, they'd be like, Oh my god, I saw Bloody Mary! And I was like, If you saw Bloody Mary, I think you would be dead. Yeah, you're supposed to be dead. <laughs> you wouldn't be talking if you saw Bloody Mary. Okay, so our next one is actually probably one of my favorites. It's the story of Baba Yaga. Um, she's from Slavic folklore, and Baba Yaga is an ogress who lives in the woods. And she guards the water of life. And she lives in a house on chicken legs. And her fence is topped with the human skulls of the people she killed. Um, and she flies around in a mortal and pestle. Um, and she usually cooks her victims and eats the and, her, and eats them, which are children. Um, so this is kind of where we get like the Hansel and Gretel like witch. From, um, and she can either harp, harm or help like her victims, so she'll um, give them tasks, and if they complete them, she'll help them, and if they don't complete them, she'll eat them. So our next myth is going to be, it's more of like an urban legend than like a myth, but it's this tale of these black-eyed children. Ooh, who, I don't know if I've heard about this. Like roam these like more rural towns, and they're actually a type of humanoid cryptid, and they're regarded as like sinister who, um, by those who encounter them, and they can be found around streets, highways, and residential homes, and they stalk passerbys, um, and they can cause they'll cause like psychological harm to those they encounter, um, and they have and they are been reported to appear as lost children or hitchhikers only to attack those who stop out of concern for them. Man. Jeez, I don't know. If you're, I know your listeners can't hear me, but the idea of like psychological damage from looking at those black eyes, like as soon as I heard that, that just made my eyes get really big. That sounds freaky. Yeah, I mean, like you just like step on the gas and like just drive away. Get the heck out of there! <laughs> nope. Just, like, don't stop. For Not the about children. it. <laughs> because I mean, they're more or less like said to be like thought of as like maybe like cute like aliens or like otherworldly because of these like black eyes yeah i don't know how in the world somebody would end up like that that's something's going on yeah. so the supernatural is definitely in there somewhere there have been many reported like accounts of these children just existing out in the world and their families live with them really yes now i okay it's interesting that you say that they're specific to indiana and ohio uh, I took a road trip about two years ago, something like that, and we drove through like the entire Midwest, and there were a bunch of states where there's just a whole lot of nothing. I mean, we were out in the middle of the night, and you turn your headlights off, and it is pitch black. No, no street lights, no civilization, no nothing. So I have to wonder, you know, you bump into a kid in literally the middle of nowhere where there's nothing but you and cornfields. Yeah, that sounds really freaky. Yeah. And they actually, you can 
I don't have their specific names, but if you Google them, you can actually find the specific names of the children really? who had the black eyes. And who and there's actually groups of them who were born there's actually the set of, there's a set of twins who were born with these black eyes. Man. And cause I think they actually caused psychological damage to their family because they would like I don't remember what they did, but they would like do weird stuff to their family and around the town and stuff that they lived in. Mm, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess we'll leave you with that stuff. Don't let the black-eyed children haunt you in your dreams. I'll make sure to keep an eye out and stay away from the black-eyed children. children. So, thank you, Mr. Lawrence, for joining us on our special segment today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Paige. This was fun. Before we drop our next episode, be sure to go to our Instagram at MJ underscore Bear Talk. Stay tuned with us in the coming weeks as we feature these topics and more of your MJ news. If you would like to leave a news tip or would like to hear us feature a topic, drop it in our drop box outside B118. And here are a few notices before we catch you on our next episode. Be sure to wear a flannel at Friday's Green Hill game. We will have a pep rally during Focus tomorrow. So show up this afternoon for yearbook Slim Chicken Spirit Night. Make sure you're using these hashtags to earn a costume day on Monday. Hashtag MJVGH and hashtag Haunt the Hill. That's all we have for you this week. Keep it classy MJ and have a have very, very great, great day. day.